When I first started my career, I met with this private equity investor. He was and is to this day, a great private equity investor. We ended up doing some deals with him and did very well on those deals. I sat down with him one-on-one -on -one for this kind of, you know, informational interview. And I asked him like, hey, how do I get into private equity? And his response was, you know, look, the pathway to private equity is pretty well set. But you graduate from college, you do investment banking for a couple years, you do in private equity as an analyst for a couple years, you do your MBA, and then you come back to private equity and you work your way up to partner. That's kind of the pathway. It's the way, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of individuals do it every year and we'll continue to do it. And I remember thinking like, I was kind of disappointed because I didn't want to work in investment banking. It sounded horrible. 100 plus hour weeks, uh, building like boring financial models, being yelled at by you know the managing director for making a little mistake here and there, building PowerPoint decks all day long. Uh, you know, it just didn't, and it, like, yeah, the pay was good, but then you had to live in New York City. And so all of your pay was just being poured into rent. And it just didn't, you know, didn't get me super excited. But I thought, hey, that's the pathway that you have to go. And so it really made me question whether or not I wanted to work in private equity. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you want to work in private equity, you don't have to do investment banking, at least not anymore. And there are alternative pathways. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. So the first thing you have to understand is the traditional path. Now I just walked through the basic traditional path, but you have to understand why it's the traditional path. Now in high finance, if you want to do anything interesting, the reality is the first few years of your job are going to suck. You're going to have to work long, hard hours and you'll spend a lot of time doing things that, you know, maybe don't add a ton of value to your own education. But there are other areas where it'll add a ton of education, both to your personal character as well as your skill development. And the reason for that is because nobody in higher finance wants to spend time training you. They want you to come ready to add value. In high finance, it's a high paced, fast moving, high risk, high pressure environment where you're dealing with tens of millions, if not billions of dollars, and your work has consequences. And there's not a lot of time to do a lot of handholding. And so this industry can be incredibly aggressive and fast. So what a lot of firms in high finance, whether it's hedge funds, investment banks, venture funds, private equity, et cetera, what they care about is that you can stand up and handle that. And so there is a bit of this meat grinder that is investment banking, where they want to see if you can go through it, earn your stripes and perform well. When you understand that, then you can start thinking about alternative pathways, right? That can accomplish the same or similar things and provide the same or similar signals to potential employers that you are a quality applicant. One of the ways in which you can do that is a lot of private equity firms today will now hire people straight out of undergrad. Now, there aren't a lot of firms that will do that, but there are several uh, funds like Summit and others that are worth taking a look at. Now, you have to be aware that what your job will entail is basically what we call smiling and dialing. It's basically a sales job, a very well paid sales job, but a sales job nonetheless, where your job will be to basically sit at the phone and call companies all day, every day, nonstop and get as much information about that company as possible to identify whether or not it's an interesting acquisition target. It is not a glamorous job and not one where you're building complex financial models and doing in-depth due diligence. You might do very little due diligence and only get to do due diligence when you actually find an interesting investment opportunity. But it is a way to get into private equity without having to do investment banking. And if done well, it'll help you develop the skill of deal sourcing. Now, in my opinion, if you want to be a great venture investor, you want to be a great private equity investor, you need to be good at three things. You need to be good at picking good deals, doing due diligence, executing deals, etc. You need to be good at fundraising, but you also need to be good at sourcing deals, building out a network so that you can get access to great deal flow. And the reason for that is because if you are reliant on others to bring you deal flow, you will never get the very best deals. Private equity investors talk a lot about proprietary deal flow. And the idea behind proprietary deal flow is that it's something that they alone have access to that deal. And because they alone have access to it, 
they're able to get a better price because they're not bidding on it against a bunch of other private equity funds. Your ability to develop a strategy and source proprietary deal flow could be a key differentiator in your ability to be a great private equity investor. And in fact, those that are gonna get promoted most quickly from analyst to VP or partner are those that can identify and gain access to the very best investment opportunities. Okay, another pathway you could take is let's say you're already in your career, you're not an undergrad and you don't wanna go work smiling and dialing for deals. Another career in private equity that's a little less known is being an operating partner. Now, I should warn you that most private equity firms do not treat operating partners with the same level of respect and compensation as the investment partners, but nonetheless, it can be an incredibly lucrative career and a really fun one because as an operating partner, you can bring your experience and operations at another company and join a private equity firm where you parachute into these companies and help change and improve the overall operations of the business and help it ultimately succeed. If you, This can be a great second chapter to a career where maybe you've built a bunch of businesses or you've helped grow a bunch of businesses and now you're looking to take board seats and you know have a little bit of operational handholding. The work isn't quite as intense as working at your own company or working in a large company where you're just an employee and you can make quite a bit of money, oftentimes getting a cut of the overall transaction and the deal. And if you pick your fund right, oftentimes those operating partners can be treated equally with the investment partners. It just kind of depends, but something to be aware of. Another opportunity could be that you lateral over from a similar career, such as working in private credit. So there are a lot of funds out there that provide debt financing to companies that are very similar to private equity. And if you understand the private credit side, particularly the mezzanine side, it can be a real advantage working in private equity and having relationships with lots of potential lenders to help you structure the best possible deal for your acquisition. Could be that you work in corporate development where you work for a large company and you are tasked with buying other businesses. That can be an incredibly valuable role because you might come with a large network of other strategic acquirers that could represent a huge advantage. Plus you'll have experience knowing how to diligence potential acquisition targets. Another pathway is through management consulting, although honestly it tends to be a less popular or less common pathway than investment banking, but it's still a good one. And there are a lot of firms that have built their reputation on hiring and management consultants because they can come in and provide operational know-how and expertise to help those companies succeed. Bain Capital was one of the first to really do this, borrowing a lot of the know-how from Bain Consulting to help portfolio companies that Bain Capital would acquire and help them succeed. And then lastly, the other way you can do it is kind of start your own fund. So, you know, I meet with people all the time that have started their own small private equity shops. I have several friends that have done it. And what they do essentially is they start doing deal by deal. They put together what are called SPVs or single purpose vehicles. They find an interesting investment opportunity. They do the due diligence. They pull together a transaction on their own, finding investors that will invest equity into the deal, and then also lining up potential debt sources to finance the other part of the deal. And by doing that, they can pull together and do their own deal through an SPV structure, thereby allowing them to start building a track record. By starting with this approach, you can do a handful of SPVs, build a track record, and then eventually raise an actual fund. Or maybe you just don't, and you become what's called a fundless sponsor into perpetuity. I know several investors, including the one I started this, this video with, who he's just a fundless sponsor. He doesn't have a fund, and he prefers it that way. He's got a bunch of tight-knit investors that know him, believe in him, and trust him, and will back his deals. And the advantage there is that he makes money on all of his winners, but he doesn't lose money on an overall fund basis on his losers. And so it really helps, it's really to his advantage in a lot of ways because the beauty of being a fundless sponsor is that you make money on your winners, but you don't take quite as big of a hit on your losers as you would in a fund structure. If you think about a fund, you get paid on the overall profits of the fund, not on the individual deals. And so if you have some losers in the portfolio, that can hurt your overall profits. But if you're doing it deal by deal, then you make money on your winners and you just don't miss out on your losers. So it can end up being a lot better. The challenge though is that 
unless you have a tight knit group of investors, it can be a little bit like chasing cats and it can make it hard to close deals quickly, which can oftentimes mean the difference between being able to get the deal done or not. If you're like him and you've built this track record of success, then it's a lot easier to pull investors in and have them invest in every company that you end up doing. And so you end up getting the best of both the fund world as well as the fundless sponsor world. Anyways, so there are a lot of pathways into private equity outside of the traditional investment banking route. But remember, what you've got to demonstrate is you've got the chops, the skills, the abilities, the fortitude to actually hang in this industry. And if you can do that and you can demonstrate that you can add more to the pie than you're going to take from it, then there will be a lot of opportunities, not just within private equity, but in business in general, for you to carve out a really interesting career. If you'd enjoyed this video, check out my video on how to get into venture capital without experience. It's a little bit different than private equity because the pathway to venture capital is not as clear cut as it is to private equity, which is both a blessing and a curse. But you'll have to watch that video to learn more.